In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God. O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you O God, who assigned St. Matthias a place in the College of Apostles, grant us through his intercession that rejoicing at how your love has been allotted to us, we may merit to be numbered among the elect. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter stood up in the midst of the brothers and sisters. There was a group of about 120 persons in the one place. He said, My brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand 
through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was the guide for those who arrested Jesus. Judas was numbered among us and was allotted a share in this ministry, for it is written in the book of Psalms, let his encampment become desolate, and may no one dwell in it, and may another take his office. Therefore, it is necessary that one of the men who accompanied us the whole time, the Lord Jesus came and went among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day on which he was taken up from us, become with us a witness to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this apostolic ministry from which Judas turned away to go to his own place. Then they gave lots to them, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. The Lord will give him a seat with the leaders of his people.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today we are celebrating the Feast of St. Matthias, which is why we had uh, the Gloria sang today. And uh, Feast of Matthias recognizes how uh, he was chosen uh, by God uh, for his vocation to continue this, uh, the apostolic ministry, if you will, the ministry of the proclamation of Jesus Christ for which he earned his martyrdom for, which is why we're wearing red. Uh, St. Matthias is uh, um, a martyr. And he was uh, martyred, I believe it was 49, AD, no, 64 AD, I think it was, 64 AD or so. Uh, and um, he was uh, stoned to death or beheaded. I think he was stoned to death. Uh, but that's the little, little snippets of information that uh, you pick up, and sometimes it gets all jumbled together. But nonetheless, uh, here in the Gospel of John, this is in the Acts of the Apostles, really, is uh, uh, how Matthias was chosen to replace Judas Iscariot who uh, failed at his duties, if you will, or turned away and had gone to his place, as the scriptures say. So uh, it was God who chose St. Matthias, and there was a couple that was proposed by both of them, um, uh, or, or rather, excuse me, uh, there was a, um, a couple of them proposed by Peter and the apostles, as it says there, uh, um, Justice Barsabbas uh, and then Matthias. And there's also a third name that Justice Barsabbas has in there as well. But um, uh, anyway, it was uh, the prayer that made the chance, if you will, uh, known to the apostles. Which one did God choose? They kind of, it's like a drawing of a straw. So they, 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 they drew lots. It's kind of like drawing straws. And we know if the person with the short straw usually wins. I think that's how it goes. Um, but uh, I don't know, I never played the draw straws thing, so maybe you played it. Um, nonetheless, we have uh, this gospel where we see that God works in even choosing whom he wants. Uh, you look at our world today, uh, so if God can choose who he wants to follow him or who he wants to replace him as an apostle, uh, you know, you can look at the church, you can look at whom God has chosen. Uh, you might say, well, maybe some of these people ended up in their positions of power because uh, they were playing politics or career building or whatever you might want to say. Um, you know, you can look at the whole world through that same perspective. Well, people who play politics really well, um, they build their careers and then they get into high positions of power. So um, the, the thing about the, the, that we need to recall there is that um, uh, God is in, was in control when he chose Matthias and uh, um, to replace Judas, and he, he is the one who looks at the heart. It is God, and that's what their prayer was, and Peter realized that, and the apostles realized that. Show us the one you chose. Not help us to choose one, but show us the one you chose, because you know what the heart is. You know every heart, Lord, and so we want you to make known your decision to us. 
when you so when I when you look at the whole world around us right now and what we're going through, there's this big there is a big transition going on to a big change that's coming. We're already in the midst of a transition. And so we need to look at God and and say, Well, Lord, you're the one who created the world, you're the one who created all these people, you're the one who chose or allowed these people to be in power. And so then we need to really go back to the Lord. Because the way, from, our, from our understanding, it doesn't look very good. So the apostles, in the gospel context of John, they're not much different than us right now. They were worried, they were fearful, they were anxious. They knew Jesus was leaving. And so this is in the context of the vine and the branches. Jesus explained to the disciples about the vine and the branches. And he says, remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you'll remain in my love. Just as I remain in the Father's love because I kept his commandments. There's this thing about doing what the Lord has asked us to do. Um, actually living according to how we've been created, to love one another as I have loved you. This will help us remain in God's love. It will help us remain in his peace. And that's what we really need to recall. Jesus is our peace. But if we don't remain in his, or we don't do his, if we don't follow his commandments, we're not going to remain in his love. We're not going to remain in his peace. If, we're gonna, if we are in his love, we're going to have his peace. That's why I use the word peace, because when I am surrounded or enveloped in God's love, I'm completely at peace. Those kinds of occasions happen rarely. And if you ever do have the chance to be prayed over or to receive the Holy Spirit, to really feel like there's nothing, you know, there's nothing outside of this, this hug from God that is complete peace. It's just being completely enraptured in this state of, uh, of peace. And it's really just being uh, um, enveloped in his love. And that's really uh, the Holy Spirit he comes upon us, and uh, this is really moving towards Pentecost as well. But there is this great understanding of living in God's love, remaining in Jesus' love, and we cannot do anything apart from the Lord. If we don't follow his commandments, we should never expect to be at peace. We can't expect to be at peace, to be happy, to be able to uh, live with contentment and joy if we're not following the way we've been created. What Jesus commands us is to do what's natural to our humanity. That's what he's asking us to do. He's trying to communicate to us what is going to be the best for us when he says, remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you're going to remain in my love. And then you're going to be able to be happy, be at peace. So that kind of ends the homily. For those of us who are watching, if you're catching this live stream, or if you're going to catch this recorded later, well, announced that next Tuesday we've been able to resume Mass. So this is the big news right now, is we just found this out yesterday in the last two days, really, yesterday and the day before. Um, yesterday we just found out how to treat our catechumens and our candidates, so we're going to try to make plans for that, and eventually we're going to have something that looks like a lot like the Easter Vigil that should have occurred on probably Pentecost. So Pentecost will be a nice celebration. That's fitting. That would be nice. Uh, but... Um, we also will be resuming daily mass starting next Tuesday, and we have to follow certain precautions. Everybody has to be more germ conscious. They have to sanitize their hands often. Uh, they have to stay six feet apart. They have to have some kind of face covering. And, we, and there's a hard number limit. We can only be at 25% of our capacity. So that's about 125 people. Uh, with any uh, um, with the Lord's grace, we might be able to extend it to the, so to the social hall and have a live stream audio video feed into there, which we are permitted to do under these circumstances. Everybody is allowed to stay away from Mass through September 6th. The dispensation to uh, not come to Mass is still in effect, so if you are still fearful about being in larger crowds, you can stay home. There's no sin. So uh, eventually, uh, these things will become more and more known. But uh, information is traveling very slowly uh, because now there's a big ramp up to uh, get ready for these events with the resumption of public mass, which we have to all prepare for. 
So uh, be patient, as I know there's many phone calls and many emails in my mailbox, in my voicemail box, that I cannot return right, right away, and that there's going to be a, a many, many questions. Uh, but basically, that's, that's what's happening as next Tuesday, uh, we'll resume the public mass and the regular mass schedule, 9 a.m. mass on Tuesday. No mass on, thir on Wednesday. Today's Thursday. It's 7 o'clock in the evening, so we'll have 7 o'clock in the evening mass. Next Thursday, there's actually a holy hour that follows at 7.30ish. So we've never done that before, uh, having the holy hour after the 7 o'clock mass. So this is all interesting news, I'm sure, to you, uh, but it'll all come clearer and clearer as we go on. Uh, we hope eventually to get to 50% and then 75% capacity, and hopefully someday back to 100%. No one really knows how to handle this. No one really knows how to, or what's coming. Uh, but this is what we know. We, I tell you everything I know when I know it. And so uh, we're usually weak behind the bulletins, but I figured I'd take this opportunity to uh, also let you know that uh, there are some good things coming. And uh, public mass will resume then starting next Tuesday, and we'll get back on our regular schedule. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, uh, Friday, 9 a.m., Thursday, 7 p.m., third Thursdays of the month, Eucharistic Adoration and Holy Hour following the 7 o'clock p.m. Mass. Saturdays, uh, 3.30 confessions to 4.30. We still have, we, we have open confessions back up the last couple weeks, so regular confession times on Saturday, 3.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. And then um, following the 19th, that'll be the first weekend, I think it's the 23rd, uh, will be, uh, will be the um, first Saturday evening Mass back on at five o'clock, and then Sunday, eight o'clock and 11 o'clock. Uh, and so we'll be back on that schedule. So that's some news, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to uh, look forward with hope to regathering again. And then uh, this is the state of life that we all live in right now. Um, but the gospel meaning, Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's telling them to remain in his love. If we lose our focus on Jesus, we're going to be giving in to fear, we're going to give in to anxiety, we're going to worry, and we're not going to be able to remain in his love. Jesus wants us to remain in his love. He wants us to be at peace. No matter what is happening in our world around us, no matter what the threats or the concerns or the fears are, Jesus is such a good son of a good God, and he is God himself, is that he's never ever going to abandon any of us. He has this. We have to have that faith to keep believing it. Let us stand and offer our prayers and our needs to our loving Father. We pray for the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength and wisdom to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the whole world and its eternal salvation of every soul, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our brothers and sisters who suffer and struggle, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our own parish family, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all the souls in purgatory, all those who have died, and all those who will die today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your church, reverently presented for the feast of St. Matthias, and through them strengthen us by the power of your grace, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When summer, in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your death, O Lord And profess your resurrection Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Never cease, O Lord, we pray, to fill your family with divine gifts, and through blessed Matthias's intercession for us, graciously admit us to a share in the lot of the saints in light. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations, graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the holy apostle Matthias. Amen. Amen. And may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all so that through the intercession of the apostles you may inherit the, inter the eternal homeland, for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mm -hmm.